for the moment joining us uh, is Owen Paul. Now, Owen Paul is, um, and some of you will know him, uh, as a reputable, very reputable um, education researcher and analyst. Um, and he's been looking just recently at uh, one of the major changes to our schools. Gosh, it's not, they haven't had any just recently called the Equity Index. And the Equity Index replaced the decile um, system. It was introduced by the Ministry of Education. Each school got a number, and that number determined how much additional funding that they received and the impact or not that that might make upon um, the educational performance of those schools. He joins us this morning to talk further on this issue. Alan, welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Um, thanks, Michael, and um, pretty good summary there of what the equity index is supposed to do. Yes, um, it, it. The idea is, as I understand it, that there is a common acceptance, certainly within the political environment, that there are some schools who will never be able to achieve much. Is that right? Because they are underfunded. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope it's not right, um, because I mean, the only reason we have a public education system uh, is to bring about change, and that has to be by the individual school. And, you know, keeping in mind that, as with the DSI system, the equity index funding is on top of uh, the, uh, the core funding, if you like. So, uh, yeah, so it, it should be a boost. It should be something that can improve that school, um, but any school that's actually hopeless should clearly just be closed down. Correct. Uh, I think we'd agree on that, but uh, that'll never happen. Um, now, you've looked at each, mm. so each school's got a number, is that right? An, an yes. EQI number, which stands for, what does it stand for? The equity index number. Equity index number, and that says what? That yeah. you you are, you're a good, you're a so rich school you're, or I mean, you're an unrich I, school? Well, the basics of it uh, is that um, a group of uh, people got together and there's a, a very large statistical database uh, in New Zealand. They've anonymised that uh, to the schools, um, but effectively they went through and felt that they had identified uh, 37 components or risk factors for an individual child that makes achievement more difficult. And then if they've found that a school has hardly any of those children, then they uh, don't get any uh, equity index funding. If they find that a school has a whole lot of those kids with high risk factors, then they get a, a significant portion of equity index funding. So what a, what's a high risk factor? Um, well, that... it, yeah, there, there, it, it can be something like um, a single parent, uh, parents in prison, um, parents with a criminal history, uh, um, low uh, income, um, parents uh, with no uh, significant education outcomes themselves. Um, yeah, so a range of things there. All right. And um, do, so if you just talked about going to prison, for example... So do you mean that yes. the school, how, how does the Ministry of Education know if my father or mother went to, school, went to prison? So this, um, the, this, uh, this statistics package um, will come up for every individual child with a particular number. And then they will find out where that child, and obviously this is a... So let me get this um, right. So every child, like my children, for example, I've got three children at high school yep. now. That they yes. will have, that that the Ministry of Education knows everything about them, including whether or not I'm a single parent, whether or not I went to jail, um, what, how much money I earn, uh, what my health status is. Are you joking? No, not at all. That's um, held within the uh, understand um, social development framework. But how, do they know, but how do they know how much money I earn? Uh, well, I don't know if they know specifically uh, for you, Michael, or for myself. Um, so they would probably more do that on the basis of whether 
you were in the system as receiving a benefit. Oh, I see. So, so if I'm in a benefit, so yeah, okay. So it's if I they know my roughly my income because I'm a welfare beneficiary. But if I'm working as a wage or salary earner or I'm self-employed, they won't know that. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, all right. That, that's sort so, of so they so they take these thirty-seven things. They, they they find a number for a particular child. They find out where that child is. They then. Uh, um, so they add up the numbers for the kids within that particular school and go, okay, this school has uh, a higher set of risk factors than that school over there, so we'll give them a, a higher equity index number and they'll get some additional funding uh, in theory to, to help with those situations. Okay, now I think there's a range, isn't there, that you get a number of, a, ma- a minimum range and a maximum range. What's what's the range? Something of 389 yeah. to 500 something, is that right? Um, so they didn't do it for um, private schools, so to you know give a some sort of a proxy in the data. Uh, I allocated private schools with a number three fifty. So um, three fifty. So the lower my number, the better I am. Is that right? Well, the lower your number, the least likely you are to get any any equity index funding. Now, of course, one of the problems with the decile system was that people equated. A DSL 10 school would be a good school, and a DSL 1 school would be a poor school. And, and so, uh, you know, a part of the, the, the public speak about this change was that people would no longer associate DSL with performance. But that's just stupid. But, so now, the, lo- the higher you are, oh, the higher the number you've got, I know the worse school you are, and the lower number you've got, the better school you are. I'm just on a socioeconomic well, basis. Is, even if you go from the perspective that, okay, so the lowest number in the public system, and I think we should be open about names and stuff like this. We've given yes, we so much away for so long. Yeah. So Hutt International Boys, the number is 365. 365. So that's a good number because they're at the bottom of, of, of the range, so to speak. Yeah. And as I said, I proxied the, the private schools at 350. Yeah. Um, and, and for some of those, that will be wrong. But yeah. I hadn't got any more information that I can use. And then if you rip down to the other end... Uh, I think you use Flaxby the, College, didn't you? Yeah. Flaxby so Colleges in Hastings. Right. What's, what's, so that's right. That's probably one of the most deprived schools in New Zealand. What, what rating does that have? That has 564. Is that the highest in New Zealand? Yes. Wow. Is that right? Gosh. Yeah, and then you go up to, you know, my old school, Wanganui City College. Uh, Did you go to Wanganui City College? Uh, well, it was Wanganui Boys back then. Yes, that's what um, I went. I went to school when it was Wanganui Boys. Yes. So, no, I, I was there. And actually, your experience at Mir, I thought, provided one of the funniest media moments I've ever heard, having been in Wanganui for six years, where someone thumped you in a pub. And that wasn't funny. But then the police said they were looking for someone in a black hoodie, and I thought, oh my goodness, that's thirty-five percent of the population. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, the police yeah, weren't no, very useful, but then they never are. Um, can I no. say <laughs> though, in actual fact, it turned out to be a um, Hell's Angels associate who ah. uh, who King hit me from behind. Yeah. Wow. And um, the police still didn't, because the Wanganui police were just useless. But, yeah, that's how I found right. out. Um, well, can I just say, um, Wanganui City Co- College is a good example of that, because it used to be a white school, and now it's a Maori school. So that would be down, right down. Is, is ethnicity also a factor? So the number of Pacific Islanders, yeah, Maori, etc. Yeah, it is. And one of the interesting things that they left out... So again, the, 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 the ethnicity would be attached to the individual, not the number of Māori in the school. So that, but one of the things that they've left out, and it's really stark in New Zealand's education system, that, that males are behind females. Uh, but they chose not to use gender as a risk factor. Um, so if you, if you, for instance, peer match, you go around the provinces and go Palmerston North Boys, this is Palmerston North Girls, Hastings Boys, Hastings Girls, uh, girls, et cetera, right around the country. Yeah. Then the girls' schools are always ahead of the boys' school. Yes, they are. Yes. And and um, it, it's something, and, uh, listen, I, 
It's something on which Elwyn and I have passionate belief. I've said it for 20 years now that boys are discriminated against in our compulsory education system. And um, you can see that um, in, in their performance across all age levels. Can I just go this, on this one, though? Yep. Uh, listen, one of the things I really like about you, Elwyn, and I think it's critical that people like you exist, is publishing information on schools and school performance um, so that mm -hmm. parents can make... Um, educated and informed decisions about where they want to send their children. Um, I'm in a monopoly position at the moment, so I've only got one school. So a lot of New Zealanders who live in provincial and rural areas in particular, we don't have a choice yep. except to send our child to the local school or to boarding school somewhere. But you yep. don't know, you can't make possibly make that choice unless as a parent you have the information and the education available to you to make that informed uh -huh. choice. One of the points that you made yep. um, in a blog that I saw was published about you was that um, the government's very, very wary of advise and the Ministry of Education in particular, of advising you to look at the achievement levels of that school um, mm -hmm. versus reading the ERO report or something similar to that. Is it, it, why why are they, the, why is the Ministry of Education so wary of pointing you to that basic information of how well a school students is performing at an academic level? There's been some improvement. So if you went back six or seven years, then schools were able to publish what was called their participant data. And so basically that meant that if a kid was still in line or still possibly able to achieve an NCA level by, I think it was June, mm. then they were participants. Those kids that had left early or were, were flanking so badly that they were no longer going to be eligible, they weren't included. And so schools would fudge their data or gently encourage students to, you know, take maybe one course less. So that got dumped, which was a really good move. But now the main thing schools publish is in February and March, which is what I call their, their cohort data. It can be called their role data. And so you can have a school who goes, oh, 50% of the Māori kids at year 13 got uh, UE, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then, but you look at their leavers data, which is what I published, and Education Counts, um, which is the ministry arm, uh, give me the raw data. The leavers data is what actually matters because it says, hang on a sec, 50% of your year 13 Māori students may have got UE, but only 10% of the Māori students that came to you were still there at that point. I mean, some schools in New Zealand are like triangles. Um, they just shed students the whole way through, and then they publish their year 13 data as if they've done something extraordinary. Um, so the leavers data is really important. And right. You know, like the situation that you're talking about and when you're a, a school taker effectively and, and a lot of, like I think about kids uh, or the kids that one of the schools I've had some association with, South Auckland Middle School, their choice is between four state schools that aren't doing particularly well and so people can say, well, they've got school choice but actually it's like you want white bread, white bread, white bread or white bread. Uh, there's, there's, there's no difference between them. Uh, and, and so that's not really choice either. So in some of those situations, it's not that you can go, oh, I've looked at the data and this school's not going to suit my kid. You can go, I've looked at the data. I've worked out that, oh, boy, you know, not so many of their children are getting the result that I hope for my child. Therefore, what do we need to do within that school environment and how do we need to support our child so they are one of the high-performing students. Mm. You know, where some schools you can drop them off at the gate and go, I know everything's going to be taken care of. Yeah. Uh, other schools, you need to know this information as a parent. So you can go, okay, well, you know, we're going to need to get a little bit of extra help here or we need to know the pathways ourselves and then not drop kids off at the gate schools because you're going to be severely disappointed. Yeah, uh, listen, I, and I've unfortunately had bitter experience of that myself with my own children. Um, I want to take, um, you've published some stats for just 12 schools and you've, yep. you've, you've paired them. 
to give an idea of what the EQI number is or the equity index number, which suggests that, and, and really I guess what the equity index number suggests is if the numbers are the same or similar, the yes. schools should be performing academically the same or similar, shouldn't they? I mean, that, that, that's the basic argument, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, and that's, it, it, when, you, when you read um, what's been published on this, uh, and on the ministry uh, website about it, uh, that's, that's exactly what they say. We believe that these, that we, we know that these 37 factors, they use the word no, uh, are ones that are um, influential or determinants of education results. Okay, all right, Th that's good. So the Ministry of Education have come up, they said that, no, the decile factor was a bit too bland, um, and it, yep. wasn't, it wasn't precise enough. Um, we've, we've gone to a much more um, detailed uh, and we believe um, statistically robust system and we're giving yep. out money so obviously it's, it's a system that has some validity as well. The money it, it is attached to the EQI index or the equity index. Now, now you're saying and this is the whole reason you're on my show today is that if I now start comparing apples with apples, in other words, I, mm -hmm. I start comparing schools that are of the same EQI, so it doesn't, that's yep. so they've been getting, it doesn't matter about ethnicity or welfare or that's it all being factored into it, then these yep. schools should academically be performing the same. But of course, as your research highlights, they are not. Yes? No. Yes. So, look, I guess a political point on it first is because when uh, Minister Hipkins um, stood in Parliament and sort of announced that they're at the stage of implementing in, implementing it, um, he he acknowledged and he was accurate that this this change process began under national. Um, it, it, the outcome, though, what they've got to is quite different, I think, than what National would have done. And um, the difference being that uh, the schools that are getting the extra money are not required to say what they're going to spend it on, and there's no goals associated with it. And, and, and so <laughs> it's just more money into the slush funds um, just because. And I, I think that that's a huge waste. It was a, a real opportunity. Hiki Parata, when she was a minister, had, I think, a very, very blunt goal uh, where she said all schools had to get their students, 85% uh, of the students, to level two in CEA. Um, it did have an effect. But I think one of the things that you see here when you look at the data is that there are only 407 high schools in New Zealand. And so there are only 407 units, if you like, that uh, are producing a qualification system uh, at that primarily year 11, 12 and 13. So it would be, it would take two hours to use the starter and sit down and, and, and go through each school and say, hey, what, you know what, here's uh, some input goals, attendance, retention, uh, et cetera, and here's some output goals and, and let's stagger them over the next five years and let's see you improve because we've introduced this new system. All right. Now, I, 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 let's, uh, let's take some specific examples here. I want to take, yep. um, I want to do Christchurch Girls High and Christchurch Boys High, and then I want to do a school called Manukura. Where's that? Yep. It's in Palmerston North. Okay. I, I, what would it used to be called? It, it's always been Manukura, and I, it's a really interesting example, so I'll, I'll glad we'll come to well, that. Well, let's, let's go to Man Manukura. Manukura and, Strat okay. and Stratford High School, which is, if you're poor and unfortunate enough to be living in Stratford, that's your local <laughs> district high school. Um, yeah. It's a bit like living in Milton. You've got Tokomiro High School. Oh, good God. Tokomiro High School. Go and have a look at that one. <laughs> that one. Um, all right. Manuk Manukura. Uh, is in yep. Palmerston North. Stratford High School is not very far away, so they're both provincial um, high schools. Um, mm -hmm. Manukura has got an EQI of 498, Stratford High School of 491, so it's only seven, so it's not a lot of difference. And then can I just read this out to my listeners, Owen, and then I'll get you to comment. Uh, the, the, the discrepancy is vast. 
So in 2021, last year, 76.5% of Manukura's leavers left with UE. Okay, 70, which is a very high number. Um, right. So over, slightly over three quarters. In comparison, uh, Stratford High School had 10.8%. So they're the same EQI, roughly. Uh, in fact, Manukura's got a lower EQI or a higher EQI, which means it should be slightly worse. And yet, 75%, three quarters of Manukura uh, pupils leave with UE. Only 10% of Stratford High School ones do. And if you carry that through to your retained, you stay at school to the seventh form, it's 82 versus 63%. Um, if you went on to study at university or tertiary institution, it's 44% of Manukura pupils do. 14% of Stratford High School. Now, um, comment on that for me. Well, the, the first thing is, I, I it, we can turn around the New Zealand education system in 10 years, and, and from uh, pregnancy to the first three years, to the first uh, five years, so parents still engaged in schools, so schools doing a much better job, actually requiring primary school teachers to have good math, science and English qualifications uh, and then into these high schools. So Manukura is a, a school that effectively was began by the Jury family and I've had some good conversations with Nathan Jury, interesting person to bring on, so they primarily deal with Māori students. So there's a double whammy here because not only have they got this really high EQI number, but you know we've got this self-flagellation going on that um, there's no way that we can improve Māori education until they understand things that happened you know, 200 years ago, which historically will be important. But I, I don't think that's necessarily related as closely as some people would advocate to what's happening today. So these are Māori students. When I first read uh, Manukura's data uh, two years ago, I actually rang Nathan and said, um, Okay, what, first of all, what are you doing? And, and, and secondly, the number that's a little bit out of whack here compared to some of the other schools is how many you've got going to degree level study. It should be, and it's going up. Um, and, I, I, and he said, look, I want to tell you a story. And he said, my wife and I had to support someone at Starship. And when we went back down to Palmerston North, I sat with the kids and I said, hey, if you go to Starship, you get cared beautifully for if you're Māori, if you're Pacific, if you're Asian, if you're European. But you don't get cared for by Māori. So every year since then, he's taken, or they've taken, uh, credit to their, their leadership team and staff. They've taken all of their students down to the Otago Health Sciences um, faculty and spent time down there and, and, and built aspiration into it. Um, and, and that's why they're seeing their numbers go up. And they're, you know, invested in activity. They're invested in fitness and health. Um, they're a, a designated character school, so they've got some choice about how they deliver their curriculum. And they're passionate. They're not satisfied with these numbers. Um, you know, they're looking to keep improving them. Stratford? Um, well, Stratford's interesting. Well, just, just, sorry, just to explain further to no. our um, listeners. Yep. Manukura has only it's got a role of 184. It's year nine to thirteen. It's co-ed. 174 of that 184 are Maori. Yep. So, um, all right, that's according to their latest ERO report. If I go to Stratford High yep. School, it's very similar to a lot of um, uh, what I call monopoly state schools in small rural areas. It's got a role of 477. Um, over a third of them are Maori. Okay. Right. So. Um, it's got a lot of Maori students anyhow, but the majority of them are Pākehā students uh, and living in a rural setting or a semi-rural setting in Stratford anyhow. Um, why would Stratford be performing at such an appalling level in comparison then to Manukura? You're saying it's the teachers, the philosophy, the environment of the school yep. itself. Is that right? Is that what you're saying to me? Effectively, yes, I am. And and if you take any of these match pairs, and they, look, I, I mean, I just I I picked twelve, and I, I it's you know I'm a 
many more. But um, some people will come back and go, yeah, but look, sometimes in a rural area, kids can get a job easily and things like that. And, you know, you've got UE as your, as your thing there. Maybe that's not that important. UE is a really good proxy for what happens down the other levels. You know, you haven't got a school with an amazing level one pass rate uh, or level two pass rate that sucks at UE. I mean, uh, and, and so it's, it's, a, it's a good window on what's happening further down. Um, but the other thing is, they're not, in, in that sense, if people are going, oh, yeah, maybe they've gone out and got a farm labouring job and things like that, good for them. They've locked themselves into a minimum wage position for the rest of their lives. Uh, unless they go back and get stuck into something else. Now, that's a rural one. This happens in exactly the same manner um, in, in, in some of our uh, less uh, wealthy urban areas mm. where, you know, kids are getting sucked out. Uh, you know, um, you can have a school like, you know, Waiheke High School where, um, you know, the local tourism business and that... Are just pushing. We we need we need kids, and so kids are leaving sixth form, that sort of thing, and they're going into these sort of uh, low aspiration. Really happy to have three hundred bucks in their pocket on Friday, um, but no one's projecting it forward for them. And and I think that that's the difference in this particular example. Uh, Manakura are, are projecting it forward for their kids. And what I like about Manakura um, and and some others like St. Paul's Ponsonby there is they pull the rug out from everyone else's excuses. Yes, they do. Uh, Yes, they do. And and, and, um, for Māori, for low socioeconomic, for kids with risk factors, they just go, ah, you deal with it. Yep. Yep. And, And... no, no, and, and, but, but I think, uh, see, I, I used to argue this, this is the reason I used to fund a scholarship at um, Haro Hohepa, uh, the Maori Girls College, mm-hmm. uh, St. Joseph's, I think it is, in, um, in, and in, really in well. Green Meadows, you know, and they had a magnificent yep. uh, principal by the name of Georgina Kingi, um, and those Maori girls used to achieve um, because they lived in a setting, and there was a boarding school, I think it was a 100% boarding school, they might have just a few day boy, girls there, but it was mostly boarding. But mm-hmm. again, it just sort of proved that it didn't really matter uh, what environment you came from, because a lot of those girls came from, as you would imagine with Maori kids, um, some really straightened circumstances. Um, yep. It was the quality of the teaching and the pastoral care that surrounded those pupils that gave them an opportunity to success that otherwise would be denied to them. This is obviously happening also at, uh, at Manukura, Elwyn. And a really deep-seated belief and, 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 you know, constructed on, I mean, one of the real uh, deficits in our schools is that over the last 25 years, uh, neuroscience, how we learn, how a child develops, all of those sorts of things has just exploded. Mm. Um, and, and so, you know, a school like Manakura w- will have full belief in, for instance, uh, the plasticity of a child's mind, full belief. Um, and we've always said to the teachers in the schools I'm associated with, if a child comes to you and they're behind, you assume it's environmental. Uh, don't assume that they can't. Don't ever label a kid low ability. Um, and, and, you know, as I say, they, they, they pull a the rug. And if I just comment briefly on St. Paul's Ponsonby, um, four years ago, their UE for leavers was 55%. And uh, a man called Kieran Fu went to the school. He, as principal, he had previously been principal at, you know, the very high performing. And I think every uh, provincial boys' school should look to St. Peter's and Ponsonby and say, you know, that's our standard. Um, but Kieran went to St. Paul's and Ponsonby, and in four years, um, with new leadership now, um, that's, that's what he brought them up to. Incredible. The other thing I've noticed, though, um, is the faith-based schools. I'm looking at Natawa, yep. um, St. Paul's Ponsonby, as you've mentioned. Uh, Listing yep. College would be another one. Uh, the faith-based schools uh, seem to be doing yep. much better uh, with their pupils than the not yep. than the state secondary schools. And I'm wondering if you've noticed that as a trend as well. Huge trend. Um, 
So if you look at Macaulay High School there, um, that's in Odahu. Um, and, you know, 65.8% of the kids getting UE. Again, so they pull the rug out from under all those schools out there that say they can't do it because. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is. And I, I've directly, um, we, we hosted an education summit here in uh, Cambridge where I'm living at the moment and, and had a whole range of people. And we had Karen Philly along and we said, okay, speaking on behalf of the Catholic schools, what, what's going right? And he was fantastic because he laid out 10 things that he thought were important um, and don't test me on all 10 right now. Um, but he also said, look, we push each other along, but we haven't all got it right yet. We're still working on it. Mm. Um, so I think that sense of common purpose and, I mean, there are others, Marist College in Auckland, um, the, the principal there is just, you know, taking it on a rocket ship ride um, to bring these kids up. And... To me, um, in the, in the, when you do a kind of regression on the data set, um, you'll see, yes, there is a trend line down um, in achievement from the schools with a lower number to the schools with a higher number. But the actual schools bounce around um, all over the place. And what I'd like us to do is to, to look at that top bar at each of the kind of range of numbers and go, what do they do right? Because yep. while we spend all of our time looking at what schools do wrong, yep. Yep. we're just embedding it. Yep. So what do Manakura do right? Why are girls doing better than boys? And, and, and how can we how can we lift the boys, not, not drag the girls back? Um, you know, why are the faith-based schools? What is it about what they do that's, that's different, that's bringing about these remarkably different results? Um, and then, as I say, parents have a huge responsibility uh, and they need to take ownership back. If your child, if you get this data and you find your child's in a school that is not achieving highly, but you don't have a choice, then you work out how to help them be one of the high-achieving students. Mm. Mm. No, Elwin, um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I intend, if you don't mind, to interview you uh, on educational matters in the future. Um, and I'd like you to be a part of our, our discussion. Um, it's, it's, it's an area which I think is almost monastic in terms education and the schooling sector in terms of hiding information away from parents and the communities that they serve. And what you do um, is, I think, absolutely critical in terms of informing parents about the choices and the opportunities that they have or they don't have. <laughs> Having had a few contacts with bureaucrats in this area, I mean, it's one of the standard things in government that um, the health bureaucrats and the education yeah, bureaucrats yeah. are supposed to keep education off the front page of the paper. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's it done to our kids? And, and, uh, and uh, if I can say sort of finally, you know, um, one of the long-standing issues is that kids don't vote. And then the second thing is that if you go through all these stats, you'd probably say, 60 to 65 percent of kids, you know, they're doing okay. So their parents aren't up in arms. Um, but the, while you keep data hidden, no one's going to be up in arms. Mm. And then while you have this Paul Me approach, oh, flipping L1 Paul, he's, you know, he's named Wanganui High School and what a dick. And all of our staff are angry about this because we try hard. Um, you, you know, you've got this kind of wall of fog that you try and talk to about the fact that, no, it, it, it's not trying hard, it's trying accurately. And it, it, it's getting the results that those kids deserve. Yep. No, agreed. Thank you, Elvin, and thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you. Nice talk to you. Okay, that's Elvin Paul. Um, I hope you're better informed at home on some of those issues. Um, it, is, it is a dark hole. It's almost a black hole. Um, education and schooling in this country in terms of information. Um, and this government's got worse at it. If you remember rightly, um, we had national standards uh, for primary schools. They weren't perfect, but they were a start in the right direction. This government canned them and said, oh, how horrible. The teacher unions didn't... The teacher unions are part of uh, hiding this information from you. Uh, we won't.